We're going to move on now because we're going to talk about a GMA health alert. New questions about something so many put in their cups of coffee every morning. Millions of Americans use artificial sweeteners to avoid the calories and real sugar, but now a new study is raising questions about whether those sweeteners could actually make you gain weight, and that's why our senior medical contributor oh. Jen Ashton is here. Yep. So what does the study say? Robin, this was really, this study sought to answer the question, do these non-nutritive sweeteners or artificial sweeteners that are typically zero calorie, do they really do what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do for the number on the scale? So do they lower weight? Do they lower body mass index? Do they lower waist circumference? Because some data suggests that they can actually do the opposite. Mm -hmm. So this particular report looked at 37 studies, crunched all the respective data, which had some limitations because of the methodology that okay. each of those studies was done by. But basically, interesting findings. In the short term, which was about six months, they found no reduction in weight or body mass index. And in the long term, about an average of 10 years, they could actually increase our weight, increase our body mass index, and increase our weight circumference, all of which putting us at risk for heart disease. Well, what was shown to result in weight loss? Well, that's the million dollar question, right. right? I mean, based on the data, clearly portion control works, right? But it's very instinctive when you're trying to drop weight to say, let me cut calories. And really, this might not be all it's cracked up to be. So portion control works, diets in general, lean protein, high fruit vegetables, watching the sugar, those work. You have a degree in nutrition. Yep. So tell us how sugar, how sweeteners, how it reacts in our bodies. This is the interesting thing, Robin, is that people get very heated and very defensive yeah, of do. their particular type of sweetness, right? Their sugar, their artificial sweetener. We know from things called functional MRIs that in the brain, whether it's good old table sugar or agave or honey or anything with a chemical name, it lights up that reward center. And what does that do? It makes us eat more, want more, and we get into that vicious cycle in the gut and in the mouth. There are some subtle profile differences between different types of sugars, but ultimately they can all increase our waistline. Well, tell us, oh, you hang in there, baby. You just keep hanging in there. <laughs> now, mama, you too. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry That's about a right. thing. She on sugar is baby. We'll keep the baby away from sugar. So what are your suggestions here? Look, I think everyone has to find what works for them, but in general, if you have a sweet tooth, then there's some evidence that that is genetically imprinted on us as early as when right. we're in utero. Do you have a sweet tooth? Uh, because of my sister and the bone marrow transplant, now I have her sweet tooth. Yeah, now really? I have, yeah. I didn't before, but I, I right. do. But it's but, true, you, you have to feed it. That's right, and so if you're trying to taper down, and we all yeah. should be aware of our sugar, I recommend a gradual, slow taper. So let's say you put two teaspoons of something in your okay. coffee, go to one, go to a half, slowly taper down, and it's a good reminder, maximum 25 grams a day for women, added sugar, men, it's about 37. And we know that sugar Sugar is everywhere. It's Even everywhere. And in this fruit. Listen, it and all. But it's natural. Is that way. so? That's. I'm going to give this to the baby after <laughs> I take a bite. Natural. All right, Jen. Thank you very much.